Hey Swayers, it's your buddy and pal Carnex, Serenity Wargaming and Explanations doing a look at a Star Wars Armada upgrade card. We're going to be looking at the title, a Visible Hand, which is for the Providence ships. How do you know that's where it equips to? Well, if the art, the great art, doesn't give it away, if you look at the bottom left hand corner of the card, you'll see the ship icon there. Opposite corner, again, just reinforces like, yes, this is for the Separatists. You'll see the Separatist faction icon there, as well as its point cost, which is a beefy nine points. Um, it's very, very expensive upgrade card. Yeah, considering that for Separatists, they're already kind of constrained by, you know, their ship costs and not having a whole lot of flexibility. But it's just like, woof, that is an expensive, expensive title. Invisible Hand has its uses. There are some things that make it interesting to play around with, but unfortunately it's just kind of constrained in too many aspects where you really don't see this title used very often. But as I always do, I'm going to read through the entire card, then I'm going to give a quick, this is how it works, uh, and then go into greater detail beyond that for people who want more of the, the intricacies and then also where I've seen its uses. As always, we start by reading the title, Invisible Hand. In front of it, you'll see a little dot or bullet point signifies that it is unique. You can only have one invisible hand in your fleet. Reading the card text, while deploying fleets, if you are in the play area, when you would deploy a squadron with Swarm, you may set that squadron aside next to your ship card instead. You may set aside up to five squadrons in this way. So that first paragraph is the first card ability it has. Uh, then you can see there's a break there. We move on to its second ability, which is you know squadron command. That's what that icon means. For each squadron you would activate with this command, you may place one of your set-aside squadrons within distance three. It cannot move this activation. And if it has AI, increase its AI value by one. So in a nutshell, how do each of these two sections play out? So, I mean, overall, it's very similar to something like Rapid Launch Bays, if you've ever used Rapid Launch Bays before. So there's a lot of similarities between how these cards work in some aspects. But for Invisible Hand, the first part is um, unique, because with um, Rapid Launch Bays, you're setting aside squadrons, but you're losing deployments when you do that, which is why you don't see Rapid Launch Bays used very often. Uh, you know, deployments is very much part of Armada. Uh, you, it's, it's very useful to have that information to know how to react to your deployment. Uh, I've seen games won or lost in deployment. So what's great about Invisible Hand is that when you're setting aside squadrons, and you can set them aside for Invisible Hand, but it counts as a deployment. So you typically will see people only put aside four squadrons in this manner. Or you can even do four squadrons, you throw one in invisible hand, and then you can set one out, um, you know, as normal. So you can you can split that up like that. So, you know, so I've seen players, you know, be able to essentially delay putting down other ships um, by putting by putting squadrons in invisible hand. Uh, so that is what that part does is, you know, does the squadron have swarm? You know, what squadrons have swarm? Well, those are the vultures which are here, you've got the Tri-Fighters. So Vultures and Tri-Fighters, that's your only option um, because I don't think you can put any... Can you put Uniques in there? Oh, it just says any squadron. So yeah, you can put Uniques in there as well. So that's the first part. You know, does your squadron have Swarm? Doesn't matter if it's unique or not unique. It can get shoved into Invisible Hand. The second part, which is that squadron command, um, for each squadron you would activate, this is again where it's similar to rapid launch base, and that instead of activating a different squadron, or in, in, I mean to even back up a step, let's go, let's uh, just talk about it purely, is that you can take squadrons from its hold, you know, that you have set aside, and plop them down on the table. And if you do that, you can then activate them. They can't move, but they get bonus AI, which AI is specifically for Separatists, where if you activate them, they're able to add bonus die uh, into their attacks if you read their swarm uh, aspect, which is uh, while attacking a squadron, engage with another squadron. No, that's swarm. It doesn't go over AI on here by the looks of it. Oh, here we go, AI battery. While attacking, you know, if it's anti-squadron or uh, anti-ship, it's while attacking, 
Uh, if you're activated by Squadron Command, you may add one die to your attack pool of a color that's already in your attack pool. So, again, two parts. One, you can deploy squadrons set aside for a visible hand that counts as your deployment. The second part is, hey, if you set squadrons from out of invisible hand onto the play area, uh, when you activate them, essentially you get to increase their, their attack die by one um, the, for that attack. So to be clear, now we're getting into more the the intricacies and the kind of like the nuances and everything of Invisible Hand. Um, we're going to, I'm going to, it's kind of like I have to back up and start to go forward and explain like different things. So Invisible Hand. So when you're setting squadrons aside into Invisible Hand, again, you can only do swarm squadrons. Uh, everyone sometimes glosses over the fact that the hyena bombers don't have swarm. So like they'll try stuffing hyena bombers into the Providence, and unfortunately that doesn't work. You can't do that. Um, you can only put the Vulture Droids in the Tri-Fighters, and you can't do the Hyenas or the uh, Bila Blubs or whatever those are called, the little bull little bullerous uh, fighters here. I mean, they look sweet, but unfortunately you can't put them in. So again, when you're putting squadrons aside for Invisible Hand, you can do five, so you can do, you know, one deployment, two deployment, and then split one half squadron getting set aside and the other squadron getting plopped on the board. Uh, for this uh, second part of the ability, the squadron symbol, again, for each squadron you would activate with this command, you may place one of your set aside squadrons within distance three. It cannot move this activation if it has AI increase its AI value by one. So again, instead of... When you just like with rapid launch bays, is where again players get confused. They they don't understand that you know you can plop like two squadrons down, and then either activate those two squadrons actually act using your squadron activation count for those two, or you can even activate other squadrons that are in the area. You don't have to activate the squadrons you put down, and it doesn't soak it doesn't suck up your activation count. So like if you have four squadrons on board visible hand, you could put all four of them down. And then you could choose four other totally different squadrons in range that aren't those four you put down to activate if you'd like. But the huge benefit of why you want to choose the squadrons you put down to activate is because you're getting this AI bonus. And again, this is only for Vultures and the Tri-Fighters. Again, you can't put down Hyena Bombers. Uh, you know, you, you, they don't have Swarm. Maybe in the future, if they have like some kind of bomber that has Swarm, and then it also has the AI ship battery it could benefit. Uh, but for right now, that's only Vultures and Tri-Fighters, and their AI is only specifically used against squadrons. It does not help them attacking ships. Um, for a couple of notes, again, more about Invisible Hand. So when it says you have to put these set-aside squadrons within Distance 3, it is literally what that card says. There's been a lot of debate about if they meant to put within distance one to three, or if it was purely meant as within distance three, uh, there was a clarification. Somebody asked, hey, does this meant to be supposed to be within distance one to three, um, or is it only within the distance three band? Again, when you look at the specific wording of the rule book, within is only within what it says. And since it only says within distance three, it, it is only within the distance three band. You often will hear the invisible hand called the donut band uh, because you can't put them in the distance one to two. You can't put them in distance four to five. It is only distance three. And where that is a drawback is that if enemy squadrons are bombing your capital ship, if they're bombing invisible hand, as long as they're butting up against and like touching the ship model of invisible hand, when you go to set down your squadrons and that within distance three band they cannot be with they they are not able to be at distance one of those squadrons bombing your ship now granted they have to be touching the ship otherwise they are going to be if they if they're sticking out a little ways then you can put squadrons down to engage them so you, there's pros and cons of both of that i know a lot of people would prefer the flexibility of just within the one to three so, you know, whether or not that was a mistake or a typo, this is currently how it's being played for right now. Um, you know, that, that, that was the answer to the question. It's like, yep, within distance three, because that's what it says. Um, and it's not determined, again, if that was a, a typo or mistake or not. Who knows? So this kind of happened in that transition from AMG or from FFG to AMG. 
So, you know, it is what it is. You you can't uh you can't do within one to three. It's only again that distance three ban. All right. Some things about the the AI batter, AI squadron. Um, somebody was asking if they could do two dice of two different color. Um, can you have to add those at the same time? Yes, you know, you're able to add two dice to the attack pool, both being of a single color or each being of a different color. Again, you can only add dice of a color that's already in your pool, like it says. Again, when you add these dice, they're both rolled at the same time. You can't, like, add one, see the result, and then add a different one uh, and see that result. Okay, because that would be resolving that effect twice. Um, some more additional information. Somebody was asking about fighter ambush and invisible hand. Uh, somebody was asking, you know, for fighter ambush, how does that work with invisible hand? And, you know, so if you're a second player, um, invisible hand, you would not be able to set aside squadron and use invisible hand. So if you're taking invisible hand, don't bring fighter ambush as your objective as second player because you will not be able to use it. Uh, this is because the deploying fleet parts timing of fighter ambush setup effect would set aside the second place squadrons before fleets are deployed. Invisible hands ability is only resolved in the while deploying fleets timing, which is before the second player could deploy the set aside squadrons due to, again, the fighter ambush ruling, which is starts after deploying fleet. So essentially, do not pick fighter ambush if you're a second player and you have invisible hand because you will not be able to utilize invisible hand at all. We got a bunch more clarifications of Invisible Hand here. Uh, does Invisible Hand permanently increase the AI value of a squadron that is deployed by its effect? No. The bonus is lost when the ship finishes its activation. Some people are trying to argue. It's like, oh, it says it gains one, so that's a permanent increase. And we're like, no, that is not what the card says. If it was a permanent increase, it would say that, but it doesn't. You know, So that needed to be clarified. Um, somebody asked, uh, what happens if you bring both rapid launch bays and invisible hand? Do the squadrons that come out of the rapid launch bays gain AI? Again, no per set aside in the rules reference guide. Uh, a ship or squadron that is set aside can only be deployed by the effect that set them aside. So you can't, they can't get a bonus from an upgrade card that didn't set them aside. Although... I would have liked to have seen that personally where, you know, that would justify its nine point cost is if these could, two could be in junction. But again, Invisible Hand doesn't clearly state that that's what it can do. So, no, nope, unfortunately, they have to remain separate. Another one is what happens if you're using both Invisible Hand and Rapa Launch Base? Um, can, you, can you throw out eight squadrons with one squad dial if, it's, if you got four squadrons? Uh, in short, the answer was you can only do four squadrons, period, between the two effects. Um, so you can only, even if you have like eight squadrons set aside, uh, you know, you can only do, you know, the, up to the squadron value of the, uh, of the ship. So you can only do four, essentially. You can split it between the two if you want, but yeah, you can't do four and four for a total of eight. Okay, that's a lot of the clarifications and things coming out. Let's get into more of Invisible Hand. So again, for Invisible Hand, another drawback of this upgrade card is in order to utilize its effectiveness in deployment, you got to have your capital ship down on the board. Uh, so for a lot of Armada's deployment strategy, typically involves around not putting your large ship down first because then you give away a lot of information. There are some strategies where that works and that kind of information sometimes can be to your benefit. But by and large, by putting your capital ship down first and then throwing deployments into it, that doesn't matter because the other player has that information of like, okay, that's where a ship is. Um, it doesn't matter if he's throwing more deployments into it to delay some other ships that he's trying to put down. Because the only other ship that really is a huge threat that a Separatist could put down is like Patriot Fist. But then you're bringing Double Large. Um, you don't have a whole lot of points available. Sure, maybe you're throwing some, some Tri-Interceptors in there. Uh, but then again, you, you're only having like maybe two or three ship activations at most. Like you're not able to utilize your fleets, I feel like, in an effective matter that can benefit from Invisible Hand. So... I almost kind of wish that Invisible Hand was a, you're able to set aside squadrons before 
uh, before having to put invisible down, hand down on the table, or even like make it split to where like you know you can only do that once, and then it has to be deployed, and then you can put more in. I don't know. Just for nine points, all these restrictions, all these kind of caveats that just kind of really hurt it. And that's why you don't see it very often on the table. It's fun when you do have a chance to actually like bring out like a bunch of tri fighters, uh, especially if you're bringing out um, uh, DIS T81, which has got the snipe, because you could throw out um, the T81 on the board. And if you're bringing the flight controller's invisible hand, well, then his uh, his snipe uh, was it snipe three goes to snipe five, and you're able to roll that. Uh, red, blue, black, and then add in, or excuse me, snipe is three blue, uh, and then you're able to add in the flight controllers, which is another blue, and then add in AI, anti-squadron two, because invisible hand, so you can, you can be throwing six blue dice at something, and so that is, <laughs> and your attacks can't be obstructed, so it's able to just blast through uh, anything that you can get, and so disc can actually, from the range three brand, you know, pretty much snipe anything that's around your invisible hand, but they are that that squadron is the only high value use case. And again, there's still uses for tri fighters. I think invisible hand is best with tri fighters. But I've also seen players take vultures, um, and they'll have General Grievous on board this thing, and they're just throwing vulture droids out just to get blasted and blown apart, just so they can resolve that commander ability. I'd say if you are bringing Invisible Hand, uh, Grievous is... Grievous or maybe Trench is really the only two where I feel like you're going to get a whole lot of benefit from. And Grievous is is the closest benefit I feel like you're going to get. Because again, with the high point value, uh, essentially you turn Grievous into a 29-point Admiral <laughs> instead of a 20-point Admiral. Which, hey, that's still cheaper, still cheaper than some other commanders. I mean, compared to, you know, Trench or you know, Dooku, Martuk, so there, there's use cases, but again, that's just going through it, why you don't see Invisible Hand so often. But uh, the times I've used, I've had fun, and that's all it is, is if you're just looking for something fun. You know, let me know where you've seen it, or have experienced cases where you've used it and had some, some uh, success. And yeah, so I appreciate you guys watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Quick shout out to the sponsors of the channel, Firstly, to Otherworld Events, regardless if you're needing assistance for event managing, planning, organizing, how to even start, or just need specific uh, ideas for what it is you're doing that you already have a plan for, Otherworld Events can help you out. Second, to Admiral Tater Ship Shop. Admiral Tater Ship Shop, while specializing in Star Wars Armada miniature items, also has X-Wing and Legion items. So if you're looking to really get some great looking acrylics on the table, whether it be, you know, holders for your upgrade cards or tokens or acrylic tokens, and most importantly, you just want a perfect range ruler with no flaws or errors in it that's going to give you exact measurements every time, highly recommend Admiral Tater. Uh, it's the range rulers I use at tournaments. I know they're cut perfectly, they're going to range perfectly, and I'm going to get that best measurement every single time. Also, just look at everything they have available.